So, John, you recently went on a genealogical trip, which you talked about, and it was a lot of fun. But I know that both you and I love going down rabbit holes sometimes uh, <laughs> when we're doing something else. And yeah. uh, have, have a lot of fun when we do it because you never, you know, like a box of chocolate, you never know what to expect. You never and, know. And you, uh, you found a really cool rabbit hole on this yeah, trip. Rabbit didn't hole you? is a, that's a great description. It's a great description. I think, Art, you and I, we know we're inquisitive people. You know, we, we talk, hear something and say, really? What about, the, you know, and ask a lot of questions. But I, I it might be a common trait for all of those people that that do that family tracing the genealogical stuff. It might be common to everybody like that. I don't know, but here's what happened to me. Um, my family, I, of course, my trip back east was a genealogical tour, if you will, and tour I met the, with wait tour de force. Tour de force. <laughs> I got. I met a lot of people. We have a large family. When it, when you start finding out how many cousins and things you have, it, you realize how large your family is. So I met with lots of different cousins from different branches of the uh, of the Colemans and the Thorpes and the Walls and the Kiernans and all of those uh, families. So one of the things that I wanted to research was a family ship, a sailing ship, built in 1881, the Samuel Seabury Thorpe. Famous, well, not famous at all, famous in our family, uh, schooner. It was a commercial schooner. And we thought, because our great-great-grandfather's name was on it, we thought, gee, our family owned this big schooner, commercial schooner. And I, we have a kind of a history in City Island. So a couple of years ago, I met with the a friend of a friend who has happened to be the president of the City Island Nautical Association, wonderful little museum, by the way. And he said, no, no, no. You Look, the re reality was that these ships were so expensive to build that whoever the operator was, whoever the shipping company was, they would go around and gather investors and have enough money to build a, a big ship, three-masted schooner that could go to London or wherever. So he said the reality was probably that your family, because they were in the sail making business, knew the people who built this ship. And who else would they go to for investors but the sail makers, among others, and uh, the Thorpe sail makers. So the Thorpes probably did one of a couple of things. They either were the largest investor, put the most money up, so they got their name on it, right? Or maybe they donated the sails. Imagine a sailing ship without sails. That had to be a large part of the budget of building and getting a ship uh, underway. So we don't know the details of that, but I thought to myself, well, this is fascinating. We didn't own the ship. You know, really our story ended there with just the name on the ship uh, and the fact that there was money coming in because we were investors. But I am, of course, I, of course, am so curious. I needed to know more. I needed to know who these people were that built a ship, where they ran the ship, what kind of a business was it, why did they do this? All too many questions. So I yeah. started so researching. So ba basically, ba basically, John, as we all know, you've never met a rabbit hole that you didn't like <laughs> I'm or curious that, about. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm too curious for my own good. So I found out the name of the, the people, that was pretty obvious, the name of the people that built the ship and owned the ship and ran the ship up and down the coast of uh, the United States, you know, dropping off lumber and pig iron and whatever else, was the Baileys. And I, I had an inkling that they were from New Jersey. Well, the, it started out by looking at Manasquan, New Jersey, where they... I must have had roots or something, but they couldn't have been from Manasquan because this ship was too big for the Manasquan River. Manasquan, by the way, today is a beautiful seaside resort on the Jersey Shore. The Joyce Shore, okay? And it's a great town. So I, I called every, mag, every uh, museum in New Jersey asking about the Baileys. Nobody had heard of them. Nobody... If anybody had anything, it might have been a painting of a ship. That was all they had. 
So I called this one little museum in Manasquan, thinking, of course, that the Baileys had moved, long moved from Manasquan. Well, it turns out they didn't move from Manasquan. They stayed in there all those years, all those 75 years of shipping. And they, the museum is the Squan Valley, the Squan Village Historical Society. And wonderful people. I, they pick up the phone and they say, Bailey Reed House. Ba I'm looking for the Baileys. This is the Bailey Reed House. So I had hit pay dirt. It was wonderful. And in my travels, in my itinerary, I built in a trip, a uh, research trip to the Bailey Reed House, the Bailey Museum, the Squan, get the name right, because if anybody visits, you should go see this place, uh, Squan Village Historical Association, I think, or maybe Society. Great little museum, just an old house that's been converted into a museum. Anyway, they were wonderful. They not only allowed me to come in and as a researcher, you know, cause they're only, they're all volunteers and they only uh, are open so many days a week, so many hours a week. So they really went out of their way for me and they had done some research, had pulled out some papers. Now their museum is really about the Bailey family. It's genealogy, by the way, if you're into, New Jersey families and genealogy. It was a great, great place. But I was, of course, really researching the business of the Baileys, the shipping business. I was hoping to find, oh, I don't know, a ship's log from the Samuel Seabury Thorpe. But they had a dozen ships, maybe a dozen, eight, eight or so ships, all pretty big, all of various sizes. And, you know, if I could find out about one ship, I could kind of extrapolate about our family's ship, if you will. So they were fabulous and they had pictures and I made copies and I took photos. I was, and then I went to the Jersey shore, so, you know, 10 minutes down the street to the beach. It was beautiful. And, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta recommend two things. Number one is if you're a researcher, you're doing family history, um, you might have to draw the line at, at where you stop researching because you'll go down a rabbit hole like I did. The Baileys have nothing to do with my family other than that they must have been some kind of business partners in the ship. Um, but, you know, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, would tell her children, my aunts and uncles, well, we'll have money when my ship comes in. That was her grandfather's ship, <laughs> right? Well, well, wait till the ship comes in. And, you know, back in 1900 or so, that was a reality. People invested in ships. So I had a cousin say, well, what, what did this ship do? And I said, you know what? Today it's called the trucking industry. Right. You order your furniture picked up here and delivered there, and a truck comes and delivers it. They did it on ships. Right, and, because uh, I didn't, they didn't have the I-95 going from uh, Maine to Key West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, and and of course, it, it, there's a lot more details to the story, some fascinating stuff about how the ship was built and why it was built a certain way, why the Baileys commissioned it. And um, and we think, so one story, quick story, family story, is my cousin, Bob Larkin, said that he remembers his mother saying that when her grandmother, whatever that is, three generations, would comb her hair as a little girl, she told Bob's mother that we had 57 ships. Now, oh. I can't imagine a sailmaking company ha having invested in 57 ships, you know, unless it was, you know, $50 here and $50 there. But those are the kind of family stories that make you start asking questions and doing research. Well, John, well, John, this, this has been a fascinating rabbit hole. You know that I like them as much as you do. And <laughs> whenever I get a chance, I like to go down, even if it's a little tight squeeze getting in there. You uh, never know what you'll find. You never know what you'll find. But That's the fun. For, for everybody in the audience, if you want to help John's ship come in, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so yep. that perhaps our ship will come in and John's grandmother, great-grandmother, 
will uh, be able to bestow a legacy of when our ship comes in, because our, our ship, ship is celebrating in. Act Two. And we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Yeah. And I look forward to hearing your stories about your genealogical Absolutely. rabbit holes. Absolutely. One last thought, and that is thank you to all the people at the Squan Village Historical Association. Wonderful people, a little small museum, almost a family museum. But if you're in Manasquan, New Jersey, stop by. It's a great place with lots of local history. You'll love it. You'll love it, and you'll love the people. They were they were just wonderful. And uh, you know what? Thank ask you. for the ask for the John Coleman room because they have a a sitting room <laughs> called the they have a, a called the John Coleman sitting room. Uh... For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.